Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. So a couple days ago, Canon finally released the final version of the EOS webcam utility on PC. Now that allows you to use your digital camera from Canon as a webcam connected to your computer. Now there has been a beta program floating around for a while now for both Mac and PC, but uh, the support was kind of limited and uh, now we're seeing that the PC version is gone finally 1.0 official. Uh, the Mac version is still beta, unfortunately. Now what the final version for the PC version at least brings is support for the EOS R, which is the camera that I've got. So I'm gonna be installing it, showing you guys how this works and give you my thoughts on this program. So let's get into it. Now the EOS webcam utility is basically a driver that you download from the Canon website. Uh, links in the description down below for your convenience. And it allows up to 42 different Canon camera models to be used as a webcam. Uh, 15 of which were recently added in the 1.0 release. Now, again, the Windows version is an official release while the Mac version is still in beta. Now, what it allows you to do is basically use your camera as a webcam for a handful of different most popular applications such as Zoom, Skype, Slack. Uh, it even works with OBS, for example. And it allows you to use a USB cable to connect to the camera and you can stream yourself or record yourself through that USB cable directly onto your PC. Now, I'm sure you have a lot of questions, so let me just show you the entire process. If you scroll down to the bottom of this page, it will tell you to select your model for your camera. And you can see here, these are the supported models for this application. And the red star asterisk next to the models are the ones that were newly added. For me, I'm gonna be clicking on the EOS R model and it'll bring you to the page. And under the page here, you see you can see the EOS webcam utility for Windows. And that's because I'm on the Windows operating system. Of course, if you're on Mac, then of course, choose your Mac operating system. And then you select and you download right here. Once you have it downloaded, you can extract. And from here, just click double click setup and it'll walk you through the setup process. Of course, I've already installed it, so uh, I'm not gonna do that again, but it's basically pretty straightforward. Next, 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 until you're finished. Now, once installed, just grab your camera and connect it to the USB cable that either came with your camera or is compatible with your camera. Uh, the EOS R has a USB-C outlet, so just a normal USB-C cable for me. From there, just turn on the camera and then you can hear the ping from the PC to show you that, tell you that it's connected and then select the uh, video recording mode. If you use photos vote mode, it will still work, but you'll get the black bars on the side of the video because it's not in the correct aspect ratio. So you should be flipping it to the video mode just so that you get the correct aspect ratio. Now, the actual recording modes uh, is up to you. For me, I have set it to aperture priority um, and I've set it to a 4K, 30 frames per second uh, record uh, profile. Now, the profile you, that you use really isn't that important because what you'll find is the resolution outputted through the cable isn't gonna be even 1080p or 4K. It's gonna be something like, 1024 by 7, 576 or something like that. And that's basically the peak resolution that you're gonna be able to get out of the camera using the USB cable, using the EOS webcam utility. If you need something higher, such as 1080p or 4K, you can always use your HDMI output and there's a whole guide on that on their website to how to do that. But uh, for most uses, for most video conferencing, chatting, or uh, streaming, whatever, uh, 1024 by 576 is plenty. It, it looks pretty good, you'll see in a moment. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. Uh, for me, I'm just, you know, the de default is 4K, 30 frames per second, so I'm just leaving it on that. 
so that I don't have to fiddle around with the settings too much. One other thing to note is that uh, the different dimensions of your record form factor does actually play a difference. So for example, if your camera can record DCI output uh, on the 5D Mark IV or the EOS R5, for example, then you'll have a output that's a little bit more elongated with the DCI form factor. Um, or if you choose UHD, it'll be the UHD uh, dimension. So just keep that in mind. So once I've got it connected here, and you can probably see in the background, it's been it's been you know moving around here. You can see myself right there. Um, let me just gonna put it right here so that you guys can see. All you need to do is to use your application and point it towards the EOS uh, webcam utility. So for me right here, this application is OBS. And what I did was, if I start recording here, what I did was I created a new video capture device by just hitting plus and video capture device and select the webcam utility. You can see I did actually try the utility beta, but unfortunately it didn't work So uh, with my camera, so I had to wait until the final version came out. So you use the uh, utility, uh, EOS webcam utility, and you can leave everything on default custom, or device default, which will give you a 1024 by 576, and everything else is default. You can uncheck uh, buffering if you wish, uh, for OBS specifically. Um, I don't think this is actually an option if you're using Zoom or Skype or whatever, but that's basically how you set up OBS to use a capture device. From here though, you can see uh, it's basically already working out in the background. It should be a plug and play experience for the most part. And, um, and as you can see, this is basically working as expected. So. You can see the experience or the, um, the latency is actually pretty good. Um, and I am recording. If I swap over to the mic here, you can see this is kind of the experience of the webcam experience you should be getting if you use the camera, if you use a microphone or something like that. Now, again, motion is pretty good. It's capped at 30 frames per second and it's not gonna go any higher than that, I don't think. It said it may depend on your model, but um, from what I can tell in my testing, I wasn't able to get what, 60 frames per second, I wasn't get, able to get 120, so uh, 1024 by 576 at 30 frames per second, which is, you know, for a webcam, it's gonna be greatly upgraded compared to whatever you have um, available. And what's most interesting, of course, is the, if you have a very good lens, for example, I've got the 24 to 70 uh, f2.8 lens, the RF lens on my camera, and the depth of field, for example, is 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 really nice, right? And it's very high quality. So, uh, if I switch scenes, can I switch screens on the front? Oh, there you go. Okay, so this is basically uh, the direct output of the camera and you can see it, it it's fast it's it's basically you know it's it's flawless uh, webcam quality now the resolution is still only 1024 by 576 but uh, from what i'm seeing at least on my screen and from my previews it looks pretty darn good and um and, and that's basically it right so um all right, so let's talk about some of the frequently asked questions. I think I covered a handful of them, but let's take a look at this list here. Uh, there are a total of 42 models supported, and um, the resolution is 1024 by 576. This may depend on your camera model. What else? Does this generate heat? So it really depends on the camera that you use you, you know you probably already know that the canon r5 is a little bit on the hot side or potentially prone to overheating since it's not recording to a memory card it's only taking in the data from the sensor it's actually not doing any of the processing or much of the processing so uh, like i said i just leave it on 4k 30 and it gets downscaled and down and whatever so it's never going to overheat in fact 
the memory card is actually right here and it's not even installed in the camera. Uh, there is no memory card in the camera right now. And what else? Uh, can you use the microphone from the camera? No, you can't. Uh, what you're hearing again is from the Yeti microphone. Um, I, I guess you can't use the built-in microphone on the camera. Oh, on that note, the camera actually drains the battery life while you're using this. It's almost like an idling drain on the battery. Even though it's connected to USB, you can't actually charge at the same time. And it, it, it seems so stupid to me that you're connected to USB and the only way to charge via USB is if the camera was off. So you got to turn it off to charge. And when you turn it on, it starts, it stops the charge and starts depleting the battery. So you better have a bunch of batteries laying around or hopefully your stream session is only going to be, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes long or however long the battery is going to last in the mode that you're using. Is the stream limited to 30 minutes? Since this isn't recording anything, it's basically saying that uh, it'll stream and stream and stream and output video uh, continuous non-stop and there is no recording limit to this. I think the last important thing to note is that you can actually record if you wish on the uh, camera while streaming at the same time. So really uh, think of this as just a live view exported to the, uh, to the PC while your camera is on and the camera functions I, I would assume taking a photo or recording is still uh, you know available for use and, and that's actually kind of interesting how they implemented all of this a couple other things to note if your camera has a flip out screen you can actually watch yourself on the camera as you're streaming in addition to whatever software has yourself displayed on your computer and also the settings that you use either the iso aperture uh you know all of the camera setting eye tracking for example all applies while you're streaming uh, you can think of it as almost like the streaming version or the PC, what the PC is seeing is a live view version of what the camera is seeing. So since it's actually not doing any recording, uh, it's just streaming that data over so that your PC can see what the camera is seeing. There is one last thing to note in my whole experience with this uh, Canon webcam utility is that there seems to be a little bug and it's for, of course, it's still early days, right? But there seems to be a bug in the camera display when it's connected to uh, the USB cable. When I'm going through menus, it will cancel out or reset kind of uh, the user interface every five or six seconds. So I might, you know, select a menu, try to change some settings. And if I don't select or save it, within that time window it'll, it'll you know cancel out and reset so that i'll have to go do it again um it's not the camera resetting it's just the user interface resetting so i don't know if it's the r5 specifically or if it's uh, all canon cameras having this issue but uh, it's just something that uh, i experienced now you know I, I i don't i'm not faulting it for for that little bug because uh, for the most part, you can see this the quality of the streaming or saving this data. It's actually pretty good. And uh, for all intents and purposes, it works pretty darn well because you know this motion is smooth, 30 frames per second is pretty good. Uh, and overall, my experience has been generally decently um, decent for this, this webcam utility. Hopefully this video was an educational video for you guys. You either learned that you could use a Canon camera as a webcam or this kind of showed you how to do it. Uh, I know that this is kind of the perfect opportunity to be able to use a Canon camera for as a webcam because there's a lot of people who went out earlier this year and had to buy webcams because their laptop cameras are, are just crap, right? Especially all this tele telecommuting meeting online meetings and everything in, in this in, in 2020 right and i know that some of the other brands actually had this capability before but it's nice to see that canon's finally getting this capability on all its cameras or at least some of its cameras anyway if you like this video make sure to hit that like button and if you want to see more tech videos or tutorials consider subscribing for future tech videos i'll see you guys in the next one